there are many portions of the word of the Lord that I have to honestly admit I do not fully understand. And some of the events in the word of the Lord are somewhat difficult for me. But I believe the word is true. I believe that it is God's word. And whether I understand it or not, it is there for a purpose. And I just always hope that the Lord will help me to understand what I need in my heart and my life to be able to live each day. I want to use some scripture this morning that um, is, is one of those portions that, and, and maybe after I read it, you'll see maybe where I'm coming from. For some of you, you're going to say, that, that has got to be the simplest portion of the word of the Lord, and I can't understand why you, you don't understand it. Um, but but I, I want you to know that up front, and, and, and I don't want you to think that I have all the answers to it. Um, if I had a thought that I would want you to remember this morning, it would be this. Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where is the lamb? for a burnt offering. In the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. You need a little background for that. Abraham is a hundred plus years old at this point in time. Earlier on in his life, the Lord had taken him out and had spoken unto him, and he said, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. You will be the father of generations to come. Your seed shall be as countless as the stars of heaven or the sands of the sea. And I'm going to bless you. And I will bless those who bless you. And Abraham didn't have a son at that point in time. But he had faith in the Lord. Sometimes it is difficult for us to have faith in the Lord when we're really talking about faith. Most of our people like to talk about faith after the fact. After that, the event has taken place, they like to talk about what faith they had. But sometimes we're not talking about faith in that respect, and that it's really some question as to whether or not there was any faith involved because we waited to see what the result was going to be. Abraham had heard the Lord speak to him a number of times. He had listened to him. And finally, his wife, in her 90-plus years, delivered a son unto him. And, and you can only imagine... You know, they, they both realized that they were both past the childbearing age, couldn't imagine that that was going to happen, and yet God had made a promise unto them. God makes some promises unto us, but most every promise that God makes unto us as His children is conditional. And sometimes we want to accept the, the, the promise and we want the commitment from God to keep the promise, but we don't want to meet the condition. We have this idea that God's just going to bless us no matter what. Doesn't make any difference what we do, how we do it, when we do it, where we do it. God's still just going to bless us because we are His children. That's not according to the word of the Lord. 
most of his promises to us as his children do have conditions. And we need to understand that and we must meet those conditions. Abraham had listened to the Lord speak this so many times and I'm sure there must have been because he was human there must have been at some point in time in his life that he wondered whether or not this was really going to come to pass and finally God gives him a son that he had desired and that he had prayed for and, 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 and his wife uh, delivers the son and they're excited about it they're proud about it and then after his son is getting older now God comes along, along and says, Abraham, I've got something else for you to do. I want you to take your son, Isaac, and I want you to go up to the land of Moriah, and I want you to offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Now listen to me, Abraham. I've given you some instructions. God in His Word gives us instructions in the New Testament for those of you who don't want to go by the old. Let me tell you, God has instructions for every one of His children, and we need to follow His instructions. He's very clear in His instructions. They're not difficult to understand. There isn't, there isn't uh, probably a half a dozen words in the New Testament that you and I as an average person cannot understand. Most every one of you have a vocabulary that exceeds anything there is in the New Testament. And so it isn't a case that God has chosen to write His Word so that only a very few intelligent and pe people can understand it. He has written it so that you and I can understand it. And He has also promised in His Word that He will give us understanding of it if we ask Him. Condition. Our problem is it's not that we don't understand it. It's that many times we don't want to do what it says. We don't want to follow it. We don't want to have to meet those conditions. And sometimes it isn't easy. I'm, I'm not going to stand up here this morning and tell you that it's easy being a child of God, that it's easy being a Christian. It is not. There is a difference, as you all have heard me say, in the two. And we, we don't have anything to do with us being a child of God at this point in time because we are children of Him, that we that have been saved. And that isn't going to change. But what we do have is the option as to whether or not we're going to be Christian. Abraham, you take him and you go up there, and I will tell you where that I want you to go and what you're going to do. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I, I, I can't even, and, and this is where I, my difficulty comes in, I guess, is it? It is difficult for me to understand how he must have been feeling at this time. The Bible says he was a man of faith, and so he has a lot more faith than I can comprehend at this point in time because I can only imagine what it must have felt like to be taking his son that he had desired for so many years and for so long that he had prayed much about, and God had finally blessed him by giving him the son, and now God is coming along and saying, Abraham, I want you to take your son, the son that you love, a son that I had promised unto you, and I want you to take him up here and offer him as a burnt offering. <coughs> and Abraham listens to the instructions of the Lord, and he takes his son, and he takes two young men with him, and they go up and they start the journey. And when they get up to a certain point, then Abraham says, you guys stay here. And I'm going to take Isaac and we're going to go on and worship the Lord. 
And after that we've done that, I will come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they were both of them together. I want you to, I, I hope you can see this scene in your minds this morning. I hope that you can imagine this scene. You know, we, we sometimes as God's children, we just think that God has just overburdened us and we're just so loaded down with all of the responsibilities that God has given us. And, oh, we've got such a tough life down here and, and we're just martyrs in our own minds and our own thinking. And we can't understand why God puts so much upon us. Let me tell you something. We've got a cakewalk today, people. Most every single one of us ought to be standing and shouting praise unto the Lord that He has blessed us and has been so good to us and we have it so easy and compared to what many people have gone through in their lives. It's difficult for me to even get my mind about what's going on here. What God is requiring of this one man as I read many times in the scriptures of other individuals whom God has given great responsibility, I think, Lord, I'm so thankful this morning that I don't have any more to do than what I'm doing. And I don't do a good job of what I do have to do. That's the sad thing. There are many times that I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I failed miserably. And then I listen and I read in the word of the Lord. And then if you really want to get into finding out something, you need to get a hold of some of the books that are out today about the martyrs that have been down through the ages of time who have stood for the cause of Christ. We, we can't even begin to imagine what those people endured. It's difficult to even read some of the things that were done for those people who stood for the cause of Christ. And yet our people today, oh, just, we're, we're, just, we're just so tried we're just so tempted. We're just, we're just so loaded down with everything. Let me tell you something. God is good to us, and we need to understand that. And, and, and so Abraham takes in Isaac, takes and lays the wood upon Isaac. Isaac's going to carry the wood up there. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now see, Isaac had already been trained. He had already been taught. And he understood what the requirements were here for them to be able to offer a burnt offering. And he understood the significance of the burnt offering. And so as they're getting ready to go up here, and his father has already told him we're going to go up there and we're going to make a burnt offering sacrifice unto the Lord, Isaac says to his father, he says, Father, he says, I see we've got the wood here, we've got the fire, but where is the lamb? I'm, I'm sure you all are way ahead of me to know that as you're sitting there thinking, you're thinking about there has been another lamb that the father loved as much as Abraham loved his son Isaac. Another son whom the world and each one of us were not worthy of, who was going to be sacrificed. And there is not going to be a substitute. Just keep that in mind. Isaac says unto Abraham, his father, he said, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. How would you like to have been in that position and had to answer that question? Knowing what Abraham <coughs> knew. Don't stand, don't sit and tell me this morning that all of serving the Lord is easy or that all of it is fun or that all of it is pleasant because it is not. There are some things in His work that are that. They are, it is work. And we need to understand that. We, we've got too many people today who just play at this thing. We've got too many people who just want to go and have a good time. They want to have, quote, fellowship. That's all. That's the emphasis. It's fellowship. Fellowship usually means good time. 
I tell people every once in a while, whenever that uh, I was pastoring in Santa Paula and we were at the point where we needed to build a new church. We, we didn't have any church, we a uh, building. And, and the church is so excited about it when we finally decided we're going to build. And boy, I mean, we go out there and uh, they poured the foundation for us and the rest of it was going to be up to us to do. We, were, we didn't have enough money to go out and hire a contractor. So we were going to build it ourselves. And about the first month or so, I mean, every time we'd have a work day or a work evening, you'd have about three-fourths of the congregation to show up to work. Let me tell you something. By the time we got down to where that we were digging the ditches to put the lateral in for the bathrooms, there were three of us out there. One of us down in the ditch digging, one holding the light, and the other in carting off the dirt that we threw out. The excitement had worn off. There wasn't, there wasn't nearly as much fun to be out there working, and it wasn't nearly as exciting as when we had started. But work had to be done. Now, God has not promised a single one of us that it's all going to be easy. And if we got that idea whenever that we were saved that everything was going to be okay, somebody misled us. Some preacher wasn't doing his job. Some pastor wasn't properly leading his congregation to understand that in the work of the Lord, there is some work to be done. Not everybody gets a free ride. And I want you to think this morning about whether or not you are a worker or whether you're a freeloader. I can't even begin to imagine how Abraham must have been thinking when, when Isaac said, where, where is the land? But Abraham was a far better man than I am because he said, you know what? God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together, and they came to the place where God, which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. It's easy to talk faith. It's easy to always talk about how much faith somebody else has. And sometimes we may want to talk about our own faith. I never really had that experience until a few years ago. And, and I have to be honest with you, at the time I never thought about it being faith. I just knew what was to be done and did it. As I look back on it, I think, you know, God gave me a lot more faith than I ever even could imagine of having. But it was strictly an ordeal by faith. I did not understand it all, and to this day, I have not understood it all. But that's okay. But there isn't any one of you going to sit here this morning and tell me you don't know what it is to do something by faith because I will guarantee you I've been through the experience. And I know that if I can do it, every single one of you can do it. It takes the help of the Lord. It takes His direction. It takes His guidance. And you don't need to think you're strong enough to do it without it because I guarantee you you're not. Abraham would not have been able to have done this had he not had the faith. I, I do not believe for a second that he could have gotten to this point. He was at the point right now, and, and, and the next verse, I think it is, is going to say, he's got his son Isaac. He has built the altar here just as God had instructed it to be done. He has laid the wood upon it just exactly as it was to be done. He has taken Isaac, his son, and he's bound him. He's tied him up, and he's laid him upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. 
all the years I've been preaching, all the years that I've been saved, I've heard God's people talk about, oh, yes, I believe the Lord speaks to us, and I believe the Lord leads us. And then turn around in the next breath and say, well, now, I want to be sure that's the Lord that's speaking to me. I want to be sure that I'm being led of the Lord. I'm going to tell you something right now. If I hear you say that, my first thought is you to cop out. That's all you're doing. You don't have to be sure. You know the voice of the Lord. Do you think Abraham at this point in time had time to say, well, I don't know whether that's the Lord, the angel of the Lord speaking to me, whether I need to stop or just go ahead and drive this knife in there. Humanly speaking, you, you don't want to have to do that. But he had listened to the voice of the Lord. He had recognized the voice of the Lord. He had followed the instructions of the Lord. And I don't believe for a second that he's going to change all of a sudden now. And say, well, you know what? I'm not real sure what I'm supposed to do here. People, we sometimes just need to get our heads screwed on straight. If you're a child of God, you do know the voice of the Lord. You do know the spirit of the Lord. And many times, I'll guarantee you, it's a lot easier to say, well, I don't know. I want to be sure. Well, what do you want God to do? Strike you down? I once had a friend who told me, he said, you know, when the Lord called me to preach, he said, I wanted the sign. I wanted to, I wanted to give me a powerful sign. He said, about that time, a lightning bolt hit the clothesline out by where he's in. He said, I had my sign. <laughs> as close as he wanted to get. Let me tell you something. I don't know whether that, the, that the God did that for his sign or not, but it, it made a believer out of him anyway. Yeah. Angel, voice out of heaven, says, Abraham, Abraham. See, call him by name. Do you know how many times in the word of the Lord, when God spoke to an individual, he called him by name? Do you think for a second when God is dealing with you that he doesn't know who he's dealing with? When God's Spirit is speaking to your heart, do you think God's saying, well, I'm not real sure where that thought went. Let me tell you, He knows every single one of you. And He knows when He is speaking to you. And you know if you're one of His children when He's speaking to you. He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger they will not follow. has the knife lifted up and he's ready to plunge it in to his son to make that sacrifice. And he stopped. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Abraham lifts up his eyes and he looks and hears a ram caught in the bushes over there. You think God doesn't work things out? Let me tell you something. That ram was taken then and sacrificed instead of Abraham offering his son. God himself took his own son, the only perfect person there has ever been that lived upon the face of the earth. After he had looked down and seen the wickedness of man, and after that God had tried to make every provision possible for the redemption of mankind, and it was not sufficient, as much as he had instructed the people and as many things as they had to offer up and the sacrifices that they offered, it was not satisfactory. It was insufficient. It wasn't adequate. Because it was tainted with sin. And God demanded, deserved, and desired that which was perfect that which was without sin. And the only one that was left was his son. And his son said, I will go. 
and I will stand in their stead. They're no longer going to have to make those burnt offerings and those sin offerings and all of those blood offerings because I'm going to go in their place and I will be the one who will take the place of each of them. And he has done that. Every single one of us are indebted to him for his love toward us. And he came because he loved us. Every single one of us. And he died and I said that we might become the children of God, that we might enjoy our lives as we live them down here, that we might glorify Him, that we might serve Him, and one of these days go home to be with Him who has redeemed us from all sin. Do I understand all of this? No. Could God have done it a different way? Oh, absolutely. God could do anything any way He wants to do it because He's God. But He didn't ask me. He didn't say, Ken, I've got to make this so you can understand it. It would have been a mess if He had have. Because if I could have understood it, He would have been so far beneath most of your intellects that you would have said, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. But God made it just as He did. And I'm convinced that his ways and his thoughts are as high as the heavens above the earth from mine. And I'm willing to accept the fact that God has this in his word for each one of us, and that's just not for me. But what a wonderful, wonderful thing it was that as the son said, where is the lamb? And God had already made provision for it.